Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. I'm Claude Dupuis, Canterbury Turnings, and um, I'm a member of the Guild of New Hampshire Woodworkers, and you're on their channel. If you like this content, go ahead and hit the like button, and be sure to subscribe. Uh, today, um, I'm still on the segmented yarn bowl build, and this today I want to show you what goes into the veneers. So I've pre-cut veneers, um, maple veneers, as you can see in these, this bowl here, and these go between the joints. And I've got a little, I cut these to length on a, I'm using a, a pull saw and a, and a little um, handmade miter box. So I set that, and I've got marks inside here, and I set that in my little miter box, and I can cut that to length with a couple of strokes. Um, it does leave a little bit of tear out. So I'll go back to my sandpaper and I'll, I'll get this tear out out of the way so that when I get to my segmented ring it's not a problem. Um, so these rings, these segments, are straight off the um, chop saws what I use. And the first thing I'm going to do is test fit them. So they've all been cut to length. They're exactly the same length. So I will put this plumber's clamp on here. And tighten it up a little. Get them all aligned. And what I'm doing is checking the fit. So every one of these joints are perfectly matched. There are no gaps. I can hold this to the light and kind of swing it around, and I've got no gaps. And I tested this before I came on the air, but um, but I didn't have to go back and adjust any. I've got my saw set up and. Um, Nine times out of ten, I don't have to make any adjustments. It's right at spot on. Uh, when I do need to make an adjustment, I go to the sander. And we'll take a little off the long point or short point to get a perfect fit. So once I've got a good fit without the veneers, I know that it's going to, once I add the veneers, I don't need to recheck it. I know it's going to be a good fit. And I want to keep these, when I do a test fit, I want to keep them in the same alignment that the test was done. So if I've adjusted a piece or two, they're in the same position they were when the fit was good. Um, these didn't get an adjustment, so I don't really need that. But um, So here we go. i got some masking tape I'm going to use for this glue. Break off a couple of pieces. I'll run this from corner to corner. And we'll show you how this process goes. And I gotta do this for every single one of these rings. The process will be the same. Um, so I'm gonna stick the first piece and I want to flush it up with the tape. Because the tape's gonna hold it. So when I lay this down on the table, I'm using a, an aluminum plate here. And the reason I'm using this plate is perfectly flat and easy to clean up. So I'm going to get glue on this. Uh, that's going to be very easy to clean up. Now I have to allow for this veneer uh, spacing. So I'm going to lay that there. Put this next segment against that and come straight down onto the tape. And then fold it down flush with the edge of that tape. Now I'm going to take that and reuse that on every segment. And I'm not going to leave it there because it's going to be in a way to set the glue. So there's no need to leave that veneer in place. So again, flushing it up with the tape because the tape's going to hold it off the table if it isn't flush. And I want everything, of course, to flush up when I glue this. So I want to be careful that I'm perfectly aligned on the tape. Um, so I'll do this for every segment, get that lined up, move it over, do the next one. Yeah, it's a little tedious, but it's worth paying attention to these details. And uh, it'll, it'll pay off in the long run. Once you get glue on this, uh, it's all over with. <laughs> There's no turning back. So you could you know, you could ruin, you know, a set of pieces pretty quickly if something goes wrong. You gotta start over and 
cut some more pieces. And if you've got some exotic woods or something that's hard to replace, um, well, you don't want to be doing that. So there they are all lined up. And I've got that little gap for the veneer. Now I'm going to cut the tape back here flush with the end. That is so that when I wrap this around, you'll see that in a second, when I wrap it around it doesn't get tangled up underneath. Um, and I'll leave this end long so I'll wrap that around. And now the glue. So I'll apply some glue. And because I've got these veneers between each one of these segments, I need glue on both sides. If I were gluing segment to segment, I would put just glue on one edge and fold it over. But because of these veneers, I have to do both edges. So I'll put a drop on there on each, each top edge, large drop. And you, you can vary the size of the drop depending on the size of the segment. And I'll go right down the line, like this. Again, this is type on original, so this is, there's not a lot of open time on these, which is okay. I don't need a whole lot of time with the tape. Holds everything aligned and in place. Uh, now I've got a, a putty knife, a smooth putty knife, and that's the only thing I use this putty knife for, is this type of work. And I'm going to use this putty knife to spread the glue, and acting as a trowel. So I'm going to trowel the glue to make sure I've got uh, coverage on the entire length of the segment. And I've spread out the glue for an even amount of glue on each one. And I'll go right down the line. I didn't have a lot of glue on this first one. I'll go back. And go back if you need to. And I want to use this putting knife almost like a trowel and I'm spreading that glue on the joint. When I lay the veneer in, I'm going to lay this string of segments on this table to lay the veneers in. So I lay these segments down to lay these veneers in. And I'll get it in the notch there and pressed up against the segment so it's in place and flush. So that when I fold this around I don't have to fuss around with where the segment's going to be. And when you, when you bring the segment around you want to make sure you leave it flat on the table. If you pick it up it'll misalign the veneers you'll end up with some, some issues. And uh, so I'm going to do that in a second. You'll see what I mean. So you can see this is quite a bit of work when you're adding these veneers between the joints. There, It adds a fair amount of work. Uh, having everything pre-cut and ready um, helps to be organized and get all these in place. Now I've got them all the veneers in place and I want to just fold this without picking it up. Uh, especially on these wide segments, if you pick it up off the table, you'll get a misalignment somewhere. And I'll fold that tape back over on itself at the joint, and I'll add this clamp. And I don't want to over tighten this thing, I just want to snug it up. A couple clicks, maybe. If I go too tight, it'll want to cut this up, cut. It, it'll pull and cup it up. So I'm all nice and flush. I've got all my veneers are flush and it's good to go. I'm going to let that dry and set that there so it doesn't glue itself to the table. Clean off my putty knife. This thing is, you know, steel and it'll, it'll rust up and pretty quick, but I like to keep it nice and smooth. And um, back to my table. I'll clean that off. Back to my table, I can clean this glue off you know, and move on to my next ring. Um, so I want to show you one more thing.
because there's another layer, you know, there's a layer between each ring. Now I've got a layer uh, veneer between the segments, but I need a layer between the rings. So the difference, and I've got a ring already ready for that. So here's one of the rings that's got the veneers and it's all glued up and I've flattened this ring just on one side. And I did that on my sanding board back behind me. And I, I took a pencil mark on each one of these segments and rubbed it on that. It's 80 grit sandpaper glued to a piece of plywood. And I've got it perfectly flat, sanded it until the pencil marks went away. So I'm perfectly flat. So now I need a layer of veneer uh, here. And these are the veneers cut to the same length, actually a little shorter because there's no and they're the same length as the walnut without the veneer in the middle. But it doesn't matter. They're going to be a little bit of an offset. So now what? Now I'm not going to glue these end to end because they're so thin. So what I'm going to do is tape them together. And uh, get that glue joint or the joint tight and add some masking tape. And I will do that all the way around. And hopefully when I reach the end, I'll have a perfectly fitting joint. Sometimes it doesn't always work out, but we'll see in a second. So here's the next one. I want to make sure I'm flushed up at that corner. Um, I'm more apt to create a circle if I'm flushed up at the tip uh, of that segment. So one, I want to get a good joint and I want to be flushed up as best as I can. Now oftentimes I'll have as I do here, I'll have something in the press there already cooking, if you will. Um, so I created a makeshift press that's uh, behind the camera there. I'm going to take you there in a second um, once I get this set. And, um, you know, I can line up a bunch of these and multiple of them and get them all lined up and glued. So the alignment of this isn't critical. Um, joint alignment isn't critical. So I am going to be perfectly fitted on the very last piece. I'm liking that. Get a little, little tiny gap there, but uh, when I close it up, it's perfect. So there they are. And that's going to set on top of this ring. I want to check to make sure I got the right one, which I do. Um, so I'm going to lay glue on this. And, um, and get this glued up. Again, uh, you know, there's, I'm going to glue and tape this to the ring so that it doesn't slide around so much uh, when I glue it. And I like to um, spread this glue out so that it isn't too heavy of a layer. It's going to tack up a lot quicker and less apt to slide around um, if I spread this like a thin layer rather than a really thick layer of glue. I'm going to have a lot less issues trying to get this ring on top of this ring to stay where it's supposed to stay. So spreading that out as best you can, as evenly as we can, using my finger as a trowel. And that's pretty good. And this uh, walnut really sucks in the glue pretty good, so you know it tacks up fairly quick. Dry my hands a little bit. So now I've got this segment, and I'm going to line it up the joints because it doesn't really matter on these small joints. And the next ring will be offset. The joints will be offset for reinforcement. So I'm perfectly centered on this ring and I want to get it in the press. I'm going to add 
a, a little bit of tape on four sides, just as for insurance to keep it keep it in place. Now there's one. But I've got to do this process on every single one of these rings that you see in this yarn bowl. Uh, so you can see it's pretty, pretty involved. Um, why do you charge so much for these things? Well, <laughs> there's a lot of labor uh, in getting these, these built. Be a lot less labor without the veneers. Because I've got twice as many segments here when you add the veneer in. You know, it's really twice the labor. So there it is, pretty much centered. You know, I could be off a little there, it doesn't really matter because I'm going to I'm going to cut this off anyway when I turn it around. Now my makeshift press. And uh, I have the camera lady follow me over there and um, show you what I got. And making our way there. So this I built the other day um, just so I had more presses I can use. Um, so there's the ring. This just built up 2x4s. I've got 2x8 plywood here. Um, so I'm going to set that ring there and I've got the tape pulled in place. This is just a plywood disc that I will center on that and I want to center it over here. And I've got a clamp that I reversed the clamping on that that I can put in between here, get it centered on the disc more or less, bring it up and clamp it. And I would move on to the next ring, and you know I've got more disc. You know I'd put one here and so on and so forth, and clamp them right down the line, and I'd have seven or eight segments that are, that are in the process of drying. So that's the process of a single ring. So you can see, once that comes out of the press, um, they'll look like they'll look like this when they come out of the press. They'll be obviously solid. This one I've already flatten. You always have to flatten one side and that will be glued onto a ring that have already flattened on the lathe and you'll keep building from there. So that's the, that's the process. Well this one's ready to, ready to glue up. Um, so I think that concludes my uh, talk for today. Um, thank you for joining me. Certainly hit the like button and uh, welcome to the Guild of the Hampshire Woodworkers. I hope to do some more follow-up videos on maybe cutting these segments, uh, how do I get them to length, um, and so on, more details that uh, I haven't covered today, and uh, maybe a follow-up. Um, so, I'm signing off. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.